Hey everyone, Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to do a battery degradation test on our 2019 Tesla Model 3 here in Sydney, Australia. For that we'll be using the Scan My Tesla app and also the OBD MX Plus Bluetooth adapter for Tesla, which we'll be plugging into the CAN bus port of our Tesla Model 3 behind us here. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm in the second row of our car and we've got a third party uh, rear screen here installed. Uh, but that's okay, you can still piggyback your uh, OBD device uh, onto it, into the uh, CAN bus uh, port, which is this blue thing here. So you can piggyback the screen or any other accessory, and then this uh, OBD device, which is, I'm using the OBD Link MX Plus. You need this if you've got an iOS device like I do. I think the green one is compatible with the Android devices, which is a bit cheaper. This is 195 Australian dollars from Amazon and it came pretty quickly. You also need a harness for the Tesla Model 3 wire, which is this one here. Uh, this is the HRN CT20211 from GPS Tracking in Canada. And this can hook onto the CAN bus port, which can be piggybacked onto any other accessory. And it can still tuck into the uh, console here. And then the original uh, uh, cover can still cover over that. So it's pretty good. I recommend getting one of these pry tools to get the, uh, the this panel off. Uh, but this this accessory here is a little bit expensive for Australians because it's 29 US dollars and then shipping is 30 US dollars on top of that. So you're paying basically 60 US dollars, which is about $100, 100 Australian dollars to ship this harness uh, from Canada. And then $195 from Amazon for this uh, OBD uh, Link MX Plus for iPhone. So essentially you're paying almost $300 to get this set up, but I think this is probably the most accurate way to get your range degradation and information from your car because you're literally hooking it straight into your CAN bus of your, uh, of your car. So you're listening to what it's telling you and it will go through the app, of course, uh, in a second. Um, now I have a little bit of a regret buying this from this harness from um, Canada because uh, I found a cheaper product on eBay for like 20 bucks. <laughs> so I've ordered one for the Model S and I'll see whether that works. If it does work, then you're potentially saving yourself like 80 bucks. But again, I need to verify the eBay product first. I bought this one on the recommendation of from the Scan My Tesla app, which said to get uh, the legit product from Canada or elsewhere in Europe. So that's all on the Scan My Tesla website, uh, which I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, so here I am in the Tesla Model 3 and uh, I'm trying to channel my inner Bjorn Island today. Um, and so I've got the Scan My Tesla app, which I want to go through with you. Now, before I do this, I just wanted to show you a tweet I posted about three days ago where I just plugged in the Scan My Tesla, uh, rather the OBD device, fired up Scan My Tesla, which by the way is $13.99 in Australia. So that adds to the cost a little bit. Um, and I thought it was just a plug and go and you could read your battery and all that very quickly, which I found out it's not really the case. You've actually got to calibrate your BMS first, which I'm going to talk about as well. But the first tweet I posted, which uh, has been seen by quite a few people and commented on as well, I posted that um, it showed a 17% degradation uh, for this 2019 Tesla Model 3 Fremont produced uh, NMC battery. Uh, performance long-range dual motor. So 17% I thought was fairly high and a lot of people agreed with me that it probably shouldn't have been that high and also looking at Bjorn's uh, you know spreadsheet and also other people are saying it's probably probably should be closer to 10% degradation after four years which I thought that was going to be the case. So there are a few caveats to this and I also reached out to the developer of Scan My Tesla. I'm going to show you this um, graphic now. This is the updated graphic as you can see, the full pack, I'll just um, make sure I can point to, there we go. So the full pack is what I'm interested in, which is 65.5 kilowatt hours. Now this is the only app, by the way, and one of the few apps that actually tells you what the nominal battery is in kilowatt hours. A lot of the third party API based apps don't actually tell you this because they can't. It's, it's really just an estimation of the range using the API from what uh, the prediction is from the computer of the car, whereas this is actually plugged into the car so it can tell you the signals coming from the car, or the, at least the app can, it's been decoded by very smart people and it spits out information like this for me, uh, a user to find out. So 65.5 uh, kilowatt hours, and that was an improvement on, um, 
I'll just make sure I can touch this. So that's an improvement on the 64.6 kilowatt hours, which I posted on Twitter. So therefore about a one kilowatt hour improvement, that's about say a 16% improvement on the original nominal battery pack. So therefore calibration has helped. And what I mean by calibration is because I generally keep this car within um, 50 to 80% uh, every day, trying to improve the longevity of the car, and it does do that, but uh, because I'm doing that, because my family's doing that, we don't actually get the full calibration of the car, so the car doesn't exactly know where it is in space, and that's a very dumbed down explanation of that. So to calibrate the battery, to let the car know exactly, you know, to match up the percentage with the amount of, you know, cells and all that, um, you need to really, uh, which is what I did, you need to drive or discharge the car down to less than 10%, ideally zero, but not practical. I didn't want to be stranded somewhere. So less than 10%, I drove it down to 9% one night, I left it for a few hours and then charged up to 100%, left that overnight for a few hours before driving off again. And as I can see, it has improved by one kilowatt hour. I wonder whether if I even drove further, because the battery is now 78%, if I drove further down to zero again, whether this number would improve. So I'll probably do another uh, video to update everyone to see whether the battery pack has improved with uh, increased driving. So that's number one. So when I divided 64 by 77, which was the original tweet I had, I got 17%. Now the developer has said to me that uh, we don't use that top range anymore, 77.8, which is what the car spits out. How lithium ion batteries work is that uh, we actually get a lot more capacity than we than what happens as the car settles down, as the lithium ion settles down after a few weeks, after a few discharges, after a few months, whatever, uh, it drops down to the rated range, which is probably closer to 74 kilowatt hours uh, where this car sits. Now there's no, there's no, I guess, official number for this. It's just what you read in the press, what you read from information online. So I think the agreed consensus is that 74 kilowatt hours is the rated battery pack for this Tesla Model 3 from 2019 from Mont. So I really should be dividing the denominator by that 74 number rather than 77. So that gives me a better number, a nicer number. So uh, 64 divided by 74 is closer to 13% uh, degradation. And then if I divide 65 by 74, it's more like 89%. So we're getting closer to that 10% degradation, which is what I was expecting for this vehicle. So a 10% degradation after four years for a performance vehicle, I don't really smash this car. We don't smash this car on the road too much. We don't accelerate except for a bit of fun every now and then. We don't go on the track. So 10% is okay. I'm happy with that. Um, and just reading online from people who have had similar vehicles, I think that's fairly acceptable. People with LFP batteries, prismatic LFPs, people with standard range or long range without the performance aspect have got better degradation, like in single figures after four years. So I wonder whether the performance aspect of this vehicle has actually improved or made the degradation worse. Anyway, that's a lot of um, theory, a lot of semantics, but at currently at 65 kilowatt hours divided by 74 kilowatt hours with a degradation of 11%, that's acceptable. Um, let's see whether it improves as I drive further today. So two points here, yeah, degradation, uh, if you want to reset your BMS, yeah, drive down to single digits, leave it for a few hours, charge up to 100%, leave that, leave that for a few hours, and then you should get a better idea of your range. Uh, and if you've got scan my Tesla and the OBD adapter, then you've got a really good uh, idea of your uh, of your battery pack as well in kilowatt hours. And then don't divide by 77.8, divide it by 74 for this 2019 vintage. Um, if you've got a newer performance or newer long range, then you've got a higher battery pack, then seek out a, uh, a better rated uh, percentage, uh, sorry, a better rated uh, denominator in terms of kilowatt hours, which you, you can find online as well. I also use... Um, evdatabase.org, that's a quite a nice usable battery pack figure, which I'll probably be using from now on when I do uh, range tests for other vehicles. Okay, so that's that's kind of the graphic, and scan my test is actually pretty cool. You can actually scroll through some of these. Um, of, co of course, some of these don't work if you're idle, but um, I'm sitting, you know, at the moment uh, idle in the car with the aircon off, so this graphic here, for example, you've got, or just, sorry, I'll scroll back even more. So you've got, uh, you know, state of charge, 78%, these motors do, as they as they as you drive the motor uh, uh, graphic, you know, moves in real time, which is pretty cool. Um, then you've got you know more graphics as well. You can see the battery temperature. Look at that, 30, 30 point seven degrees, uh, which is nice. I wonder we, we should have a look at that when we're charging actually too in another video. And then you can scroll down here for each of these to um, 
you know, customize your view like that. So that's kind of the graphic side of things. Um, and again, you can sort of scroll through all the graphics like that to give a uh, better detail. Uh, high voltage battery, so 400 watts, sorry, 400 volts, which is what we know what this Model 3 and the Model 3 Y platform runs on. Um, you can see the power in kilowatts, uh, regen, discharge. So obviously there's a background 0.3 kilowatts kind of running in the background there. Um, then you've got, uh, yeah, 12 volt systems working good, uh, which hasn't been changed by the way. You've got, uh, yep, battery coolant running there. And then you've got the capacity, which we ran through as well before. It's saying my full range is 429 kilometers. Again, I don't pay too much attention to the kilometers for range. I, I'm really excited about the kilowatt hours. That's, that's kind of an absolute, a more absolute, a closer to real range rather than just kilometers. Cause you know, we, we're all humans, right? We're different. We drive differently. The weather's different. There's so many variables affecting range that it's not really an absolute figure as such, unless you're a robot and you drive the same way every time and you drive in a vacuum with no climate or road condition to affect your range. Anyway, um, so let's have a look now at um, another cool aspect of this app, which is basically the signal lists. And you can actually look at all the different signals like this, or you can sort of, um, you can sort of, you know, adjust it. So you can just sort of filter it. So you just have the battery or you can have just the temperature, the speed, HVAC, but I'm going to put all so we can actually have a look at each one of them in more detail. And uh, if I start from the beginning here, you've got signals to find, like I said, the, the, the CAN bus spits out these signals and smart people who develop this app then decode it for us so I can have a look at it uh, from an end user point of view. Um, and then you've got things like, let's see, uh, birthday year, here we go, that's pretty cool, birthday year. Uh, let me just put the cursor up one second, everyone. Okay, so birthday year, 2019, um, birthday month, July, birthday day, so down to the very day it was built, that's that's pretty cool. Birthday hour minutes, so 2331. Uh, I wonder it's my, whether it's my time or their time. Um, state of charge, yep, 78%. State of charge expected, yep. What else we got here? Regen, 55%. Uh, fan, battery current. Uh, let's see, CAC, that's important too, apparently. Um, cell amp uh, capacity, I think it is. And I think higher the better. I'm sitting at 191 average, which is pretty good, I think. I've checked with the developer. Imbalance 3.8, uh, cell temperatures around that 30 degree mark. Um, let me just get rid of this for one sec so I can scroll this up for you. Okay, so we've got more information here. What have we got? So we've got, yep, battery uh, information. What's interesting too is the steering speed. Look at this. So if I have a look at this one here, I'll just get the cursor up again. So have a look at the steering angle here as I move the steering wheel. Actually changes in real time. That's that's super cool. That's super cool. Um, so what else we got here? Oh, this is really inf really cool here. Um, so have a look at this. So max, uh, sorry, a DC and AC charge uh, over the lifetime of the car. So I have clearly AC charged. I've been a good boy, as Beyond says. I've been AC charging most of the time. You know, ten kilo, ten thousand kilowatt hours divided by twelve thousand kilowatt hours for DC charging. What's that? That's like 85% maybe uh, AC charging. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I've regenerated 5,000 kilowatt hours over that time. I've, uh, so that's like 50% of the time, uh, well, close to 50% of the energy has been from regeneration. Is that right? No, hang on. Uh, regen, yeah, okay, let's say 50% from regen uh, from, my, from my brakes. That's absolutely incredible. Incredible. Um, yeah, that's one big benefit of electric vehicles, right? Um, so what, if, what else have we got? So nominal full pack, you've been through that. Um, yep, uh, nominal remaining. So that's like correlates to the 78% state of charge. 13 to, to charge to complete. Um, full pack when new, again, that's, that's information spat out by the car, but we probably should be using the rated, which is 74 kilowatt hours, so a better denominator. Uh, what else have we got? Um, yeah, so that's, we've already gone through that. So kind of repeating itself now, isn't it? So let's see what else we can see. Brake pedal. I'll just put my pin code in. See whether the brake pedal changes. Oop. Something happened there. Uh, where was that brake pedal? 
Yeah, I've lost that now. Anyway, brake pedal. Yeah, so it might be binary there. On, off, on, off. Anyway, it's not doing much there, brake pedal. Um, and then you can see all the cell voltages here. So there you go. That's sort of all running at about four volts the moment so I don't see anything too imbalanced just on spec here which is good and then as you're driving obviously you've got consumption in real time uh, down the bottom the average consumption so yeah we might have a look at that in another video where we're driving and then we can see all that real time stuff which is also very cool as well yeah so I guess overall I mean I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here on the scan my Tesla app I'm happy that with cell calibration or battery calibration, the BMS has now got a better idea of where my battery's sitting. Uh, I've improved my um, DJ, uh, sorry, degradation from 17%, which is false because I was using a higher denominator. And using a smaller denominator, I've gone from 17 to 13% using 74 instead of 77. And then with calibration, I've gained an extra kilowatt hour. So now it's down to 11% degradation or 10 to 11%. I wonder whether today, as I drive more, it'll go into single figures. So yeah, there's actually a lot of play there, isn't there? Just from manipulating the battery a little bit, manipulating the figures a bit. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That's my first Scan My Tesla um, OBD uh, video. And again, it's, it's a fairly expensive setup. We're looking about $300 really, potentially less if you buy one from eBay or a cheaper supplier which I don't guarantee, by the way, until I test my Tesla Model S. Now, the Tesla Model S 2015 Vermont NMC battery. Now, I'm really curious about that because that's an eight-year-old battery, which will be at, well, almost eight-year-old, and it'll be out of warranty pretty soon. So uh, I'm very interested to see what the degradation is on that. So make sure you tune in for that one once I get my adapter or my harness, and then we can go through that together. All right, everyone, well, hopefully that all made sense. Uh, I will be probably keeping a spreadsheet like Beyond for all the vehicles that I've owned or will be owning. That way you can see what the degradation has been like over the years. I'm really curious to see what the LFP degradation is once we get our Tesla Model Y uh, standard or rear wheel drive here in Sydney, Australia. We'll certainly be monitoring that from day zero. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Thanks everyone. And until the next ludicrous feed video, happy charging.